Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Dairy in Your Diet virtual cooking class. I am Charlotte. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and we are still in our January Refresh and Renew, um, you know, state of mind. And so joining me today is my friend, first of all, but registered dietitian, Ladena Kaplan, who is going to help moderate and, you know, talk to us and guide us about all things nutrition and, you know, of course, talk to us about the benefits of dairy. But Ladena, tell everybody a little bit about what you do here at HB. Sure. Thanks for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. So my role at HB as a dietitian is supporting our nutrition services team. Yeah. We have an amazing team of dietitians that can help customers understand what's the best for them, whether it be, you know, make, making sure they're managing a disease state, reaching them, the, uh, helping them reach their health goals, or just learn in general about nutrition. So it, you don't have to have a specific reason to come and see a dietitian, but we yeah. can certainly teach you a lot. Absolutely. And I've known Ladena for 13 years now, and I can say she is the biggest foodie, the biggest food fan. And so um, I'm sure you could teach me a thing or two about cooking as well. Well, I learned so much from you guys. I mean, the HEB chefs, they are constantly bringing these new things, ideas, inspiration to me on a daily, really. I learned so much from y'all. But I can't wait to see what we have here today. I'm so excited. So um, we're talking about dairy in your diet, and it's such a huge, a huge topic, right? Dairy is in all things, right? And so I spent some time thinking about what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it, and I narrowed it down to one ingredient, right? So um, yogurt. So how can we take a culinary approach to adding some yogurt, some fermented foods, some you know, into our diet? And I was like, all right, let's cook some things with yogurt. So the things that we're going to cook today, we're going to do a Greek yogurt marinated chicken. We're gonna do a yogurt pot de creme, which is a take or a better for you take on the traditional French um, dessert. We're going to do a labna, and from that labna, we are gonna do two separate recipes. So labna is just a strained yogurt um, that is even more strained than say like your traditional Greek yogurt, like what you would find in the store. And it's just delicious and creamy and it's like, it could be a cheese substitute, right? So anything that you would use like um, sour cream, a uh, sour cream, but um, cream cheese or ricotta or even um, mascarpone, you could use this labna. Um, it's absolutely, absolutely divine. It's my favorite. I get really excited about, um, about it. But um, Lorena, tell me a little bit about, actually, while you tell me a little bit about this, I'm going to get ready, but tell me about like yogurt and why you like yogurt. Do you even like yogurt? Oh my God. Yes. yes? I love dairy. I love dairy in general. And I'll start off by saying that because, you know, what it brings to the table in form of not only yogurt, but cheese, cottage cheese. I'm going to throw in ice cream too, Charlotte. Ooh, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of really great things that we get for milk alone. And so it, dairy is a huge part of, yeah. of, of our lives. And we like to teach people how to incorporate it in ways that fits for them. Okay. Um, so we'll talk today about nutrition around uh, dairy as well as options that you can find at your HEB. Again, our team of dietitians is such a wealth of knowledge behind products. And so uh, we want to be able to help you find what you're looking for to fit your needs. Do you eat yogurt on the daily? I eat probably yogurt every other day. I would be lying okay. if I said every day, but it is something that is always in my refrigerator. All right. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you. Um, it really is a boring approach to it, but I just do it uh, straight out of the cup. This is why I was super excited about today because I usually just yeah. eat it out of, out of the cup. I pour myself out of the Greek yogurt yeah. tub. So You're like a lot good. of people. Yeah. You make a parfait yeah. if you do or straight out of the cup, right? So yogurt comes in all, all different types of shapes, sizes, um, flavors, whatever. But it, it's, it's more than just a breakfast food. It's definitely an ingredient in recipes. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our marinade. And the reason why, so, okay, back it up. Yogurt as a marinade, right? So this is very typical of um, Mediterranean cuisine, Middle Eastern cuisine, and Indian cuisine, right? Yogurt is a brilliant marinade for any protein. And it has the added benefit of, so it has the, the bacteria, the microbes in it, but also the lactic acid, so like the byproduct of that um, fermentation. And it's really low in acidity, but really high in impact. So you can use a lot of marinade um, and you can leave it in the protein in the marinade for a really long time without running the risk of over marinating. So sometimes when you over marinate, like with lemon, wine, vinegar, or something like that, the, the proteins get really mushy, right? Or they can get really rubbery. 
not with yogurt. It's absolutely brilliant, absolutely beautiful. Y'all can't see this blender, but in this blender, I've added um, just some whole milk plain yogurt. You could use Greek yogurt. For the marinade, it doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure it's a plain yogurt, right? And we're just using whole milk yogurt, so full fat, right? Um, we're gonna add in a little bit of Dijon mustard, so about a tablespoon, two tablespoons. I'm a really big fan of mustard, so um, I like that sort of spice that it has to it, so I'm gonna add a little bit more, like a good tablespoon. We're gonna do two cloves of garlic. Um, you could add more or less if you like, depending on you know what your preferences are. Preferences are. If you're Scott Tompkins, you're gonna put like a handful. If you're me, two cloves will do. We're gonna do a little bit of lemon zest to this, right? Do a little lemon juice if you want as well. And what I'm doing right now, like this right here, is just a really basic, like simple marinade. It's not too, it doesn't go one way or the other in flavor, but you could definitely add whatever you like, right? So you could add, like spice it up with a little bit of like roasted red pepper. You could put some toasted cumin in this. You could even do like pineapple or ginger. I'm gonna add some lemon juice in there. And Chef Charlotte, yeah. Rhonda on Facebook wants to know, can you sub sour cream for yogurt? Um, you can in this particular recipe. So you, I'm not sure if you would get the same type of marinade um, like effect, but you would get, um, that's a really great question, but you would get that tangy tart flavor. So perhaps instead of doing a marinade here, um, you could use this as like a sauce on top, if that makes sense. So because of the lactic acid in the yogurt, that's yep. what's helping with the uh, marinade. Yep. So it's that, yep, that the, the bacteria and um, the lactic acid. Okay, so I'm gonna add a mango. I'm, the, this isn't in the recipe, but you know, I saw these at the store, and these are the Altufo mangoes, and I said, I think I'm gonna do it. I think it'll taste really good. It'll add um, an element of sweetness to our marinade and a little bit of color, and I think it'll be fun. But like I said, you could do jalapenos, you could do, this worked really well in rehearsal. Uh, ooh, this is a really ripe one. That's one of the things that I've learned from our chefs is a recipe is, doesn't have to be followed to a T. They're no. really just, they're bumpers, right? I, what, did you, what did you refer to as it earlier? A guideline. The guideline. That, this knife is like so dull. I am like two for two in my classes. Last class I picked a dull knife too. All right, we're gonna add this in here. Yes, recipes are guidelines. It's just a suggestion, right? Like the speed limit. I'm just kidding. I like to look for what's gonna, what's going in my refrigerator next, and how do I incorporate it in this one recipe? So I feel like that's what right? you're doing right now. We're gonna use these because we've got them. Also, like if you have like a mango or something that's like going funky in your refrigerator, this is this is a great way to use it. All right, we're gonna add this to our blender. I'm gonna bring this over here so you guys can see what's happening in the blender cam. We're gonna start really on low. I'm gonna do it like Scott Tompkins. Oh, are y'all ready? Are you doing the, I'm gonna you're be doing real the blender brave. challenge also, okay. Nope, see, <laughs> this is my nightmare. My nightmare is happening. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Gonna add a little bit of olive oil to this guy. Speed it up. Salt. Pepper. Does not, this does nothing. This, this is just my peace of mind, this does nothing. <laughs> all right, so we got our marinade there. I'm gonna get rid of our blender, all right? Now, save this here. All right, so the recipe calls for um, chicken thighs. You can do um, chicken breast if you want. This recipe is perfect for chicken breast. But I'm gonna show you a funner way, or like a more exciting, interesting way to prepare the chicken as opposed to just, you know, the plain, um, thigh itself. So we're going to skewer these really quick. Um, right here I just have like the natural chicken breasts. I'm sorry, chicken thighs. Chicken, chicken thigh. thighs. Um, and what I'm going to do is just kind of remove some of this extra, this excess fat, just sort of, you know, reduce our saturated fats. That's right, yeah. And that's, that's a good way to just bring down the calories a little yeah. bit, make sure we're not getting too much of that saturated fat per day, which should only be 10% of your daily calorie intake anyways. Okay. So if you have a 2,000 calorie diet, I'm like put you on the spot, do a bunch of math. How many? <laughs> right, if you, if you have, if you're 2,000 calories, then no more than 20 grams? Yeah. 
I'm horrible okay. at math, Charlotte, but I can. I know it's so mean to make you do math like live. But I can read those nutritionals like nobody's business. So now I'm just cutting this, the chicken breast, uh, their chicken thighs. I'm cutting these chicken thighs into strips, just like so. And we're gonna skewer these guys, right? I'm gonna show you guys how we do it. I've got some wooden skewers here. Um, I soaked these for about 10 to 15 minutes um, prior to skewering. You probably go a little bit longer. And what I'm gonna do um, is I'm just threading in this chicken into the skewer, right, onto the skewer. Um, I used to work at a Thai food restaurant when I was in culinary school, and I had to make satay for days. And this is how we would do it. We would just thread it in. And you don't really want to see the, the skewer, but it's okay if you do, right? It's not the end of the world, right? Just slide this just like this. And if we didn't have skewers, Chef Charlotte, we could still... Just marinate it and grill it. Yeah, just it. marinate the chicken thighs as is, right? No, no harm, no foul. And that's how the recipe states. Um, I just thought this was a little more exciting. All right, so we're just going to skewer this guy like this. And then I've got some that I already did just for the sake of time. All right, like so. Perfect, right? All right, we're, I'm going to do a quick little cleanup here, and then I'm going to show you guys how um, a little quick tip for actually marinating these guys. So let's move this out of the way. And so Babs on Facebook has a question for you. Yeah. What veggies could you marinate instead? So we're looking more of a, of a vegetarian approach here. Anything like an eggplant would be beautiful, like a grilled oh, eggplant. You nice. could do, um, you know, you could do potatoes would be really great. You could marinate, um, let me think. That's a great question. Yeah, I, I like that too, though. Yeah, when you mentioned the eggplant, that does sound like Oh, it's like fabulous. meaty yeah, and it would good. Be it would really be great in this, um, in this dish. You could do cauliflower, right? Okay, so I've taken a piece of plastic wrap and I've laid it down flat onto my cutting board. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chicken, my skewers, right? And I'm gonna lay them down like this, just like so. Let's do, four is good, right? I'm gonna take a little bit of my marinade. I keep grabbing pork. And so the marinade turned a little bit yellow from that mango. It's really pretty. You can see those flecks of pepper. And just pour it on like this. This is how we did it in the restaurant. And then you'll just mix it up a little bit like this. Twirl them, twirl them, twirl them. Make sure you get some of that marinade into all those little nooks and crannies like this. And then, are you ready? This is my favorite thing in the world. Then we do the tuck, tuck fold. So then we just fold it over, right? Take that plastic wrap, fold it over, fold it over, fold it over. Ta-da! And then we have all the marinade stays in, right? Package. You can put it on a plate in the refrigerator, and you don't have look. My, I'm a fan. My I'm sticks a fan are clean. clean. I don't cooking. have like messy. I love it, right? So great. I'm gonna throw this in the refrigerator. We'll let this marinate for, you know, 30 minutes to like you could even go overnight, 48 hours, because again, the low acidity of the yogurt is going to, um, it's not gonna cook. It's not gonna cook or over marinate that chicken all right and you, you mentioned you could even freeze that so if you just portioned yes. if you were doing meal prepping yes and portioned it out yes. and um, so stored it correctly then yep. freezing would be totally okay um the next recipe yes you can and then as you as you wanted them so you could do like packs of eight packs of four whatever it is right and then as you needed them just defrost them in your refrigerator and then throw them on the grill so um our next recipe is we're moving into our um dessert so we're going to do this yogurt pot de creme and traditionally, a pot de creme is like this decadent custard, chocolate custard, which is made with heavy cream and sugar and thickened with egg yolks and then cooked in a water bath. Uh, it's actually, it's divine, right? Um, this is a better for you take on it, but also show you that yogurt is not, again, not just for breakfast. However, this could be breakfast, um, but it has lots of applications, right? So we're going to make something similar, right? But you're going to get all of this wonderful texture and flavor. It's, it's just divine. So I've got some milk right here. I'm going to throw this in the microwave for about 45 seconds. We don't need boiling milk. We just need it hot enough to melt some chocolate. All right? So I'll do like 45 seconds there. And while that's happening, I'm going to grab my chocolate and my vanilla and my maple syrup. I have a fun fact if I want to share, Charlotte, if yes, you don't please. mind, since you're working with milk right now. Okay. Did you guys know, and I'm talking to our viewers here, did you all know that we've got dairy plants in San Antonio and Houston that supply all of our milk that comes through HEB? Um, but guess, 
Charlotte, guess how many gallons a week come through to our dairy plants? A million? Double that. 2.1 million gallons a week come through our dairy plants to go into creating all these wonderful options. So it's not just yogurt. It's think cottage cheese, think cheese, yeah. think ice cream, um, all these wonderful things um, that dairy produces for us. 2.1 million gallons a week. Isn't that crazy? It's that's amazing. A, it's it's busy amazing. Cows. Those are busy cows, <laughs> and, and it's just amazing, um, you know, aside from yeah. all the deliciousness that it gives us, also this the nutrition that milk brings us as well, too. So I, I can't skim over that and right? how important the nutrition is from, from uh, milk. Okay, can you see how this milk is steaming? I do. Right, so it's super hot. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour this hot milk over our chocolate, and I'm just using a regular semi-sweet chocolate, and we're going to let that sit together while we incorporate our other ingredients into the yogurt. And I'm using the um, organic Greek vanilla. You could definitely add plain, whatever you like, but since it's vanilla, I think it's going to be perfect with this. Okay, so milk. 2.1 million gallons of milk. Yes. There's a lot of Texans drinking a lot of milk. And, and also, the, again, the, what it produces for us. Yeah. Um, you know, th so, we, think, we don't think about cottage cheese and yeah. um, things like that. They, they, that. That comes from milk. So tell me, like, everybody knows that, like, milk is good for, like, calcium, right? Like, strong bones. Like, we always talk about that. But, like, what is, like, the ultimate, like, what are some of the other benefits of? So I, I definitely want to point out that milk has eight grams of high quality and a complete protein. Okay. Okay, that is naturally found in there as well. It also comes along with 13 essential nutrients. So some to really call out are going to be ones like um, our calcium, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, even zinc in there. Um, know that our milk is fortified with vitamin D, vitamin yeah. A, um, and that's really important. Also, you're not, most people are not getting enough vitamin D to begin with. So, yeah. Um, one of the things I like to encourage people to do is that when they're looking for their milk, go ahead and get some with a little bit of fat so that you're able to absorb those fat-soluble vitamins, okay. D and A. And what, there's other fat-soluble vitamins as well. Yes, we all your fat-soluble vitamins are going to be A, D, E, and K. So that means fat must be present in order to absorb them. Cheese is a whole food, a perfect food. Yes. Do you hear that? Cheese works. Okay, so in my bowl right here, so we've got the yogurt. I've added vanilla and maple syrup. I am a huge fan of um, maple as a sweetener. It's really, it's like subtle and it's not too sweet. Um, and if you use a really good high quality maple syrup, it doesn't have that like overly mapley pancake note. It's just really beautiful and subtle sweetener and it goes really well with the chocolate. I added a little bit of salt. And the reason why I added salt to this is that um, Anytime you want to balance flavors, right? Or anytime, like salt and sugar are opposites, right? And so um, think of it like a little bit of saltiness makes the sweet seem that much sweeter, right? Um, the little bitter notes of, um, uh, from the dark chocolate are enhanced by a little bit of that salt. So think of like dark chocolate and sea salt, right? Yeah. So the salt just sort of brightens everything and lifts it up. So I, I highly recommend like when you think about doing um, recipes, like think about where you place the salt or the acid or the bitter, right? Okay, so I've mixed that together. And now I'm going to mix our chocolate. So incidentally, Lodena was talking to me about like plant-based um, recipes and that sort of stuff. And I tried this recipe with our coconut yogurt. Yes, and that, that takes you to one of our questions that we just got. Could you use a milk alternative for this? 100%. I did this recipe earlier, and I did it with the coconut, um, the coconut milk yogurt, and then I used coconut milk as my, um, like, as the alternative milk, and then um, HB carries some um, vegan uh, chocolates, right? So there's like, and they're allergen free and dairy free and that sort of stuff. So that's, that's an option. And we even have some chocolate that is like stevia sweetened, right? So right. if you were looking at that, but yes, this recipe works beautifully um, plant-based. Yeah, no, I've I even done it with tofu. Oh yes, that, that would be really good. I, I have to throw in there, you know, HEB has something for everyone. Um, and if you're, if you're trying to figure out what is that, what is that something for me? I've tried everything um, and it's just not, Either I'm not liking yeah. it or it's not helping me in, in, in any type of, of health, you know, way. 
um, know that an HB dietitian can help you determine that what's best for you. And so I just want to oh. throw that out there. There's something for everyone Look how good this um, out there at HEB in that dairy case. I'm sorry, I totally lost myself in this delicious chocolate decadence. Okay, <laughs> so remember how we were talking about how um, the pot of creme was like the cream and thickened with the egg yolks, right? So obviously we're not cooking this and we don't have any egg yolks in this, right? And we don't have any heavy cream. So what we're gonna rely on to give us that thick texture is obviously that yogurt, the body of the yogurt, the natural silkiness of the yogurt, but also the chocolate, right? So what happens is as this chills, it's going, the chocolate is gonna solidify, right? And we've, we've kind of emulsified it in this delicious yogurt um, sort of matrix, if you will. Um, but it'll get firm, right? It'll still be silky and smooth, but a little bit of that firmness, it's actually, it's wonderful. All right, let me grab my bowls and we will get this in the refrigerator. We got a question around maple syrup. Uh, Rebecca wants to know what she should be looking for for a high quality maple syrup. So there's a couple of grades of maple syrup, and I'm not a maple syrup expert. I wish I was. So the one that I buy is like our HEB Organics just because I love it. But you want to look Same. for something that says grade A amber, right, color. Um, and that's just like, you know, they have other, they have darker grades, whatever. This is just the one that I like. But this is the one that we carry. And um, incidentally, you could just totally click on it right now. If you just click on the thing, and you could buy it, and we can just deliver it to your house. So is it Rachel? Rachel, click the button. We're by Rebecca, the maple syrup. Rebecca, Rebecca was asking that. Oh, it was Rebecca. I'm sorry, my bad. I'm sorry. I got the R part right. Now I'm embarrassed. Rebecca, I'm sorry. Okay, she we're going to add these guys in here. We're going to add this, and we're going to use my favorite tool, the most underutilized tool in your whole arsenal of tools. This is the ice cream scoop. It's not just for ice cream. It's not. It's for other dairy, like yogurt. <laughs> okay, I have, a I have my own question about yogurt. So I know that yogurt is like, I know that it's good for us. I know that Greek yogurt has a lot of protein in it. And I know that it has probiotics, right? But like, tell me, tell me like, yes. I know, tell me about probiotics and why I need the probiotics. Yeah, well, let me back it up a little bit before okay. that, because you mentioned about the, uh, the protein. So if you yeah. don't know, uh, Greek yogurt is going to be a, a strained yogurt, which increases the amount of protein yep. per serving and which also makes it thicker. Um, yes. which you're going to be so excited to see this next recipe that uh, Chef Charlotte does because it's going to take it to the next level. However, probiotics in general, they yeah. are going to be present in your yogurt. Um, any fermented food are going to have probiotics. We yes. need these for good gut health. Yes. Um, but such great research out there, Chef Charlotte, around how our gut health is connected to so many other pieces within yeah. our health. And so... And it's really important that you're getting these, if not on a daily, I, I would make sure you're including them on a uh, multiple times a week so that you're getting those really great uh, probiotics and good gut health. Okay, so I'm going to pop these guys in the refrigerator. Um, you want to let these guys go a minimum one hour, but, you know, you could go overnight, and they're going to get so beautiful. They're going to get so nice and firm. But I have a question. So I hear a lot about prebiotics, prebiotics and the combination of probiotics. So tell me about this. Yeah, so prebiotics are basically going to be the food for the probiotics. And, you know, you, they can simply find those in fruits. And so making sure you're including things like berries when you're consuming probiotics is going to help feed those good bacteria so that they can continue to grow and flourish and really stay present within the okay. gut. And this is especially important for folks who are experiencing any type of digestive issues. Yep. Um, you know, or if you're, you know, experiencing any type of nausea or you're vomiting, things that you want to replace yeah. all of those um, uh, good bacteria that you're losing. So if you're not consuming yogurt, you've got to look into it or even other fermented foods. Okay. And, like, fermented foods are, like, things like sauerkraut and kimchi and... Um, kombucha. Kombucha. Ooh, big fan. Big fan. Okay. So our next recipe we are going to make is... Um, the blueberry labna. And um, again, from the very beginning, or at the beginning of the show, uh, I talked about what labna was. And basically, we take that delicious, beautiful, creamy yogurt, and we are straining out more of that whey to get this thick, almost cheese-like um, texture. And it's absolutely amazing. And this blueberry labna, like move over cream cheese, this is the best schmear out there. I'm a huge fan of this. Um, we're also going to make a tzatziki, and that's going to be like 
hands down one of my absolute favorites. But um, what I've done right here, so you can see, you can see this bowl in front of me, right? And I don't know if y'all can see from the front, but you can see, I'm gonna remove this, right? Yes, we can see. You can, we can see, see all of that liquid in there. That is the way, right? So that is way that we have strained from this yogurt right here. And we are using um, the vanilla Greek, so the, um, which is absolutely wonderful. And we are straining out more of that, that way, which means we're concentrating more of that protein, right? Yes. Okay. But we're also concentrating this texture. So this is beautiful. So to make the tzatziki, I want to show you really quick, not tzatziki, labna, I'm sorry. I want to show you all a really quick way to do it. Just taking my glass bowl, and I've got, um, I've got my strainer, I've got a piece of um, cheesecloth, and I have a piece of butcher's twine, all right? You can use a rubber band if you want, you don't, if you don't have butcher's twine. Um, but incidentally, you can click on the button and we can deliver the butcher's twine to you along with the cheesecloth, so right? So we sell the cheesecloth at, yep. at our HEB. We sell this whole setup right here. You could get, you could get the strainer, the cheesecloth, the borosilica bowl, and this. Click the button, I mean, they'll have it. The whole, your whole lobna setup will be delivered to your house. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, the cheesecloth kind of comes in this kind of, in this, I just unfold it and refold it. You want a big square, enough to cover your whole bowl. And I'm like, this is really technical and complicated, so I want everybody to pay really close attention. <laughs> Zoom in if you have to. I'm gonna take the yogurt, and I'm just gonna dump it right like this. This <laughs> is was, real technical, right? Yeah, you were tricking us. <laughs> it's gonna go like this, Look, right? So simple. I know. Uh, and then what we're doing from here, we're gonna pull it up and we're gonna make a ball, right? Like this, right? Like a little package, give it a, a gentle twist and then we're just gonna tie it. And like you can use it like a hair tie, rubber band if you want, no big deal. Um, but just trying to just, we have a lot at, around, lying around. And you don't wanna squeeze it. You don't wanna give it too much of a twist because um, you don't want to squeeze the yogurt through the cheesecloth or the strainer, right? So we're going to use, um, you know, time and gravity, so right? Just let it naturally happen. Yep, right? And it's just, you can already see. See yeah, how it's I already... Yeah, I see some dripping through right? already. Okay. Yep. Now, if you don't have a lot of time for that, you could add a weight to it like this. Just a little weight. Like, just a plate. And then something like a tuna can, nothing too heavy. So more of a and, flat surface. Yep, so. and it'll push down, and it'll so you'll get a little bit more pressure. Again, you want to make sure that you're not squeezing the yogurt through the um, like through the cheese. Too cloth, much force, right? not too yep. much force through there. Okay. Rhonda so, has a question for us. Yes. Again, does a coconut milk yogurt have the same acidic flavor of regular yogurt? Hmm. Yes. It does have, so it does have a little bit of that tartness. Oh, y'all, are ready for this big reveal? I'm really excited about this. Um, it does. It's not going to have 100% um, of the same, you know, notes because coconut itself has that note, but it is. It's going to have, it's going to have some of it. And it also has the probiotic. Yep. And it's the same bacteria. Same bacteria used. Y'all, I tied this so well. Come here, little guy. Okay, come on. Just um, a note from our sponsor. No. <laughs> you, need, you need some untying. Oh, no, I did it. Okay, here we go. All right. Untying music. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. Can you all see this? Can you see this? Wow. It's so, look at this. Look at this texture. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now I'm just going to take this and very unceremoniously plop it into this bowl. Look at this. Ah! Oh, that's Okay. Do you see how now thick that thickness, is? So we went yeah. from something that was almost like, you know, it was creamy and sort of loose and sort of like wet to this like super thick deliciousness. Look at this. Ah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Ah, can't hand it. All right, now, super easy. Blueberry labna. I'm going to add a little salt because, again, something with a little bit of sweetness um, needs a little salt to sort of balance it out, give it a little, you know, balance. And we are going to add... I'd lose my like head if it wasn't attached to my neck today. I need some blueberry preserves. Oh, you, I've got you've got some right here. Where? Want to reach over? Ah, here we go. I found it. Ta-da! 
I'm using the wild berry. I love this. I love all of our jams. You could actually, you don't have to do blueberry. You could do raspberry if you wanted or, or cherry because we have that really good, you know, cherry. You could use whatever you wanted. I'm using blueberry. One of and my favorites has blueberry and cherry in it. Have you tried that one, Charlotte? Or more fruit? Oh, what? it's so good. I bet that is so good. I'm going to add like two solid, solid scoops. The recipe calls for um, dried blueberries. I couldn't find any dried blueberries in the store, but again, just like Lorena said, don't worry about that. Recipes are just guidelines. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Can you see this? Like we can I make a cheesecake it. out of this. It's so, it's so perfect. Thick. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yep, definitely right? over cream cheese. This is, wow. Look how beautiful this is. So instead of adding in um, those dried blueberries, I'm going to put in a handful of walnuts. Um, it's going to be beautiful. That The bitterness from the walnut, the like tannins, and this like creamy, oh, this is going to be so good. This right here could just be like a snack for me. But imagine smearing this on like a bagel. This is going to be the best. So one of our viewers wants to know, how long did it take you to get your lab nut? At that texture that, that is you're a great question us. yeah that is a great so this was this has been um, sitting in the refrigerator overnight so 24 hours 24 hours look at this do you love this look at it this looks so good essentially we just made a really big bowl of fruit on the bottom yogurt right. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is actually a really good meal prepping trick you could buy the big thing of yogurt and then just put some really good preserves at the bottom of your jar container whatever and you're ready to go for work and then you can customize your flavors. Okay, this is absolutely perfection, and I'm so happy about this. It's got those walnuts in it. Get creative. I wouldn't recommend raisins, because that's not my favorite, but you know. Pistachios would be good. Pistachios. Oh, girl. <laughs> That'd be like, that's like super desserty. Okay, I'm gonna stick this back in the refrigerator until we're ready to use this, and we're gonna get onto our tzatziki, all right? I'm also, for the interest of time, Oh, gonna God, grill our chicken, chicken y'all. Look and at this. Do you Chef see Charlotte, this? real quick before you yeah. go into that, how long is, is the lab not gonna stay in the refrigerator? So that's a great question. So like seven days, right? You wanna make sure it's covered. But um, because of the like acidity level of yogurt and the pro uh, like the bacteria and stuff like, you know, it'll stay for quite some time. You do wanna make sure that you don't leave it out on the counter and stuff like that, like with any dairy, you know? Okay. So here are our skewers and our little packets. I love these guys, right? Everybody has such great questions tonight. They do, and, and I mean, what I'm liking is you're showing also in convenience, clean, you know, keeping it clean. Yes. Those are also useful tips. Okay. So you are gonna get, um, Lorena noticed this earlier, you are gonna get a little bit more um, caramelization on your chicken um, because of the natural sugars in the yogurt that are gonna caramelize. And also we did add a little bit of um, mango, which has some sugar, but oh, the chicken on the inside is gonna be absolutely wonderful. Y'all, this is like my favorite trick. Ta-da. Throw these guys on there. We're gonna season with a little more salt and pepper. And for time on those, Charlotte, you mentioned, you're gonna wanna go a little bit longer than we would say if we were gonna do that whole flat thigh because we have like, we've cut them up and we've created more surface area, which means, you know, more area for like, you know, bacteria and it's harder to get on those things. And also just, I'm gonna salt and pepper these. Just as a good rule of thumb, you wanna have a meat thermometer um, just in case, you know, I don't know how many times people have like taken chicken off the grill, cut it and been like, no, and then gone back. Ready. Um, you just wanna, Use a meat thermometer, 165. Save yourself the headache, the heartache. All right, salt, pepper, we're gonna let those go. We're also gonna throw a couple of jalapenos um, directly onto our fire right here to roast them. And we're gonna put this in our tzatziki. So we're gonna take this traditional tzatziki and kind of give it a little Texas twist. And we're gonna add a little spice. But I couldn't just add the jalapenos. I had to roast the jalapenos. Well, right. that's bringing out some of the flavor. And that's, this is what I've learned mm -hmm. from y'all. The, the roasting of, the, of really any vegetable, especially our peppers, brings out a different flavor in them, doesn't, doesn't it, Charlotte? It's so, it adds like this like element of like, so jalapenos have this sort of like plain vegetal Greenness? green flavor, right? 
I'm going to use this bowl. All right, bowl. And so when roasting them, like, they soften and deepen a little bit, like the flavor does. And I love it. And then that extra char. OK, so this yogurt right here, this is our plain, right? I labeled them as not to make vanilla flavored tzatziki. <laughs> We're going to toss this guy. Look at this. Ah, oh, you guys. So for the tzatziki, you also strained I also this. strained it because you get this texture. The texture is undes like, it's undescribable. It's almost like this like beautiful cheese. It's so great. And it's creamy and just, I love it. All right? I just, I'm, I'm can you all tell? Can you all tell that I'm like really <laughs> juiced about this? I'm all right. just as excited too. So the fundamental flavors in tzatziki are going to be, um, Cucumber, lemon juice, garlic, dill, um, you know, pretty like, pretty simple. Again, we're spicing it up by adding in those jalapenos. Oh my God, can y'all see this? Can y'all just see this? I'm so happy about this. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. It's smooth, like icing. I love this. All right, so what we're gonna do is, um, Okay, we spend all this time extracting this like liquid to make this beautiful, thick, rich, delicious yogurt. And so when we add in the cucumber, right, so that foundational, fundamental flavor of tzatziki, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shred it, right? We're gonna shred it and then we're gonna squeeze it because just by the nature of cucumbers, right, they have a lot of moisture in them. So you can see right here, like when you cut open a cucumber, right, the seeds, and all of that, that's where all of that water is, right? And if we were to shred this and throw it in there, it would just, you know, the liquid would leach out and we'd sort of lose this creaminess that we've worked so hard to create, right? So what we're gonna do is, you can take extra cheesecloth, so if you have any remaining cheesecloth from making your, um, your labna or a clean, a clean dish towel, we're just gonna take this, we're gonna use a straight up box grater, right? And I'm gonna use the big side. And you're using the mini cucumbers. I'm using right? the mini cucumbers. They're okay, so, so the, cute. <laughs> yes, the recipe calls for um, like an English cucumber, half an English cucumber, whatever that is. Um, sometimes I don't want to commit to the whole to the whole um, cucumber. I'm not going to use the whole cucumber or whatever that is. So I like the mini ones because they're you know portion size. Um, and also like the running joke in my house is that my house is where produce goes to die. Like, I use half of it, and then it sits in the bottom, and the next thing you know, I've got cucumber, like, sludge in the bottom, right? So this is a good way to, like, keep your produce fresh, you know, longer. It comes in its own wrapper. Look. It's like this little guy. Right? The I love best. it. Look, its own little wrapper. I love and it. The, okay. And what you're doing there, too, um, you know, a lot of people like to take the skin off their yes. cucumber. And there, you if, you're, if you usually do that, grating it, it's going to be yes. Ooh, no so good. On these little guys? the skin is much thinner and much more tender. So you don't have to worry about that like hard waxy, right? Okay, so you can see kind of wet, right? So what I'm gonna do, I've got my thing, wrapped it up in a towel. And you can already see the green, that's the, like the, the juice, the liquid, the water. And I'm just gonna squeeze it. This should have been the straining class. <laughs> well, well I mean, you don't realize how much liquid is in your, I mean, this is also just a great visual to, to see how much liquid is in fruits and vegetables, too. Now, for yeah. this application, we yeah. don't want it because it's going to change the texture. But And then you take that and you give it to your neighbors and you charge them $15 for this <laughs> cucumber shot, all right? Cucumber shot. So then we get this beautiful cucumber just like this. Super great. We toss that in. Oh, this is so pretty. Da, da, da. I love it. Um, if you use a laundry detergent that is super fragrant, um, you may want to even like, you know, again, get that cheesecloth or some paper towels because you may run the risk of having like Tide flavored um, labna and that wouldn't be so cool. All right, next, the thing we're going to do is we are going to add in our garlic. Let me come over here and check these guys. Whoa, whoa, look at these guys. We're doing Ooh, those it. peppers. Let me use tongs so I don't. Yeah, let's not hurt burn myself. our fingers. Oh, we got a question around yeah. uh, the skewers um, that you're using for the chicken. Could you put those in an air fryer? Brenda wants to know. Absolutely, you could. Okay, I didn't Absolutely. know that. I guess they would be wonderful in an air fryer. Um, one of the HEB air fryers, the kitchen and table, actually has like a rotisserie in it. 
That thing's pretty rad. All right. Go to your, okay. Let's look at these guys. And then another quick question around um, chicken. So should you remove chicken before it gets to 165? So I, I'm um, sorry, read that question one more so time. So should you remove chicken before it gets to 165? Does it continue to co cook after you take it out? Or, um, or should it be there until 165? That is a really good question. So when we talk about like proteins like beef and stuff like that, um, we talk about carryover cooking and how you can remove the protein from the grill at a certain temperature and let it carry over cook. I don't recommend doing that with chicken, um, just across the board, especially when we've skewered this chicken and we've cut it into um, like planks and you know, we've increased that surface area for more bacteria. We want to make sure we cook it to 165. That for was sure. a great question. Brenda. That was a really good question. Okay, so. I am adding in my garlic, and we are zesting this garlic in there, right? And the reason why we are zesting it is because I want this garlic to, like, melt into this yogurt. Be like butter. Oh, yes. Oh, slippery little guy. Okay. All right. Oh, smells so good. It smells delicious in here right now. It's, it's I mean, Look everything's at this. coming together Look so at this. wonderfully. Is anybody cooking along with me, just out of Ooh, curiosity? yeah, I would love to see if somebody is cooking along with us today. Oh, look at this. Look how pretty this is. It's like, I can't. I'm having too much fun with, like, <laughs> tzatziki, all right? Tzatziki sauce. It's, it's all right. Does I've wonders. got that in there. Now I'm going to add in our herbs, right? So the herbs that we, um, that I talked about briefly was, like, the, um, the dill and the mint. Oh, this is so good. So you get this, like spice from your jalapeno, right? That little bit of heat, and then you get this like coolness from the cucumber, and then we added mint to this recipe, so you get this addition of this cooling thing happening in your mouth. I mean, this is like, it's too much. Well, I, too and much I think fun. most people are just like using one type of herb when you yes. can really make it more dynamic. Yes, like. I've also added parsley because I had parsley just lying around, and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to move into this, like, use the ingredients that I have, right? And I'm, you know, I don't, I don't want to be the place where produce goes to die. I want to utilize my produce. And if you're just getting into, like, using fresh herbs um, and you don't know what to do with them, like, parsley is just sort of like salt and pepper. It goes with anything, right? Like, you can put it with anything. Um, mint goes in lots of savory dishes. So anything that you're using cilantro with, throw some mint in, right? Okay. And the dill is just foundation, like, you know, fundamental in this. And also the mint is like homage to my homie, Scott Tompkins. He'd be very, very happy knowing, oh, it smells so good. This on a piece of salmon, like this right here on salmon, get out. Get out. Or like an everything bagel toasted with some um, smoked salmon, oh, it would be the end of me, right? Just like this. Did we salt and pepper it? Did we add a little lemon zest? We're about to. How are my um, jalapenos? Did I completely incinerate them? Yes. I they, still think they, they look died. fine. Oh, we got okay? another really great question. Ashley on Zoom is asking, yep. um, is the strain liquid? So th that would be the way, Yep. right? That would be the way the strain liquid that's yep. coming through. Um, is it um, higher in protein? I, I'm, I'm not too sure. Honestly, I'm not going to know the answer to that okay. question. But here's a follow, here's a second part to this. Okay. Could you um, save and use for something else? That is a fantastic question, and yes, you absolutely can. So you could save the whey, and you could add it back into things like um, a smoothie, right, or a protein shake. Absolutely. Um, don't waste it. I think that's a great idea, and that's a really great question. Um, I remember, like, I was telling Lorena this, like, when I was a kid or whatever, when you would get the yogurt and it would have that liquid on top, I would just dump that into the sink, and I was doing that somewhere. Somebody was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know what that is. And they were like, that's whey. You mix it back in. It's perfectly fine. I was like, all right. So now I do it. I just mix it right back in. Okay, so I've added a little bit of lemon juice for an extra hit of acid. We're going to hit this with a little bit of olive oil, just because olive oil is, 
absolutely wonderful. If you were going to serve this like in a bowl just like this, you could throw more of that cucumber on there and then um, a little bit of um, olive oil on top. Okay, I got distracted with that question, but here would be that jalapeno. At this point, we just want to wrap this guy up with plastic and we would let this natural steam from the jalapeno itself, um, it would steam a little bit more. And what that does, so you can see in there, what it does is it helps the skin lift away from um, the vegetable itself. It makes it easier to peel. Um, Ladena, do you want this super spicy or light spicy? I want to go medium right. now. Medium? I, I think, yeah, now I'm feeling medium. Okay. All right. So um, look at this. Look how easily that comes away. See, I've never done that before, and I've seen it so many times, and you, it just it, it looks so easy. Oh, yes. If you don't have a grill or a, um, like a, a gas cooktop, you can just throw it in a cast iron pan or a nonstick skillet, no oil needed, um, or you can put it under your broiler. Look at this. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave a little bit of that char on there because I like that flavor, but all right. And you said medium, right? I said medium, yeah. All right, so we'll leave a little bit of that in there. I'm probably going to regret touching this raw, but. And so our viewers know those seeds are what really will take it up. Uh, right, and notch. if you want it more spicy, add some more seeds in it, right? All right, so then I'm just going to cut these guys into little strips like this. Man, this jalapeno smells so good. I'm going to do the whole guy. We're going to do the whole guy in there, all right? Okay, let's go for it. Whole guy. I am not opposed to that. You could also do like a little serrano if you wanted. Oh, now we're talking more heat. Yeah. Look at this. All right. This will be the first time I've ever tried tzatziki with jalapeno. So. Really? I, I'm excited. It, well, yeah, but that's why I'm it just I, so much inspiration comes from I'm so excited. Our H -E -B chefs, it's always, always a fun Look time. At this, okay, we're gonna do this. A one, we're gonna give it a once more, just to make sure. Now, like the thickness of this, like this could be a schmear, right? For sure, it could totally be a schmear, but it could also like just be a dip. Like you could dip a, a carrot or like a cucumber or something, a celery stick into this guy, right? Look at this. Ooh. Talk about a guilt-free dip, though. Oh yes. You You're can feel good about it. Yeah, you can You can definitely feel good about it. This oh, should so be, pretty. I know uh, Chef Scott would probably say, like, put this in your Super Bowl menu as a dip. The big game. <laughs> Throw in a bread bowl. All right, look at that. Look at this. Oh, all right. I'm going to, oh, my gosh. I'd put, like, a spoon in there, but I don't want to embarrass myself. I'm going <laughs> to do a quick little cleanup over here. I am going to, we're gonna, and then we're going to start plating some stuff. All right, guys? We're going to start plating some stuff. Does anybody have any questions? Is everybody having a good time? Somebody, does anybody I, hate what we're doing? I know I'm having a good okay. time. And good I am welcome. I welcome more questions to come in. You know, if, you, yes. if you're new to, to um, HEB Nutrition Services, ask me some questions around what yeah. we do as a team. I'd, I'd love to be able to, to answer those questions as well. Ask me questions around dairy, too. We, we really um, try to help folks understand the benefits of of all foods, uh, all the nutrients that are found in our foods, and so dairy is one of those things that that we know can be a part of of, um, of your plate. Ugh. How are those coming out, Charlotte? They're doing pretty well. It's like you know when like I'm like y'all y'all didn't stick earlier. <laughs> like don't embarrass me. Come on, make me look good. <laughs> They're doing really well. These are looking really beautiful. You can, again, you can start to see that like nice caramelization. These guys up here are sticking a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Not a big deal. We're just going to leave them right here. I'm going to turn my grill down just a tad on this side. These look perfect. I'm really happy with the way these are going. I am going to grill some bagels real quick, and then we're going to start plating. What are we using okay? bagels for, Chef Charlotte? Um, for our lobnas, come on. Oh, we got some. Gosh, this is a plain crazy. bagel. This is an air. Raise your hand if you're an everything bagel person. Are you a toasted bagel person or a plain Toasted, bagel? yes, yep. please. Yeah, Kay. I just, um, well, because I, I usually store them in the refrigerator anyways. You do? Yeah, especially Kay. like our, our bakery, what we, which you can find in our bakery. I like to throw them in the refrigerator. Yeah. So the toast is just a okay. natural part of making it really fresh. 
Oh man, you know, for some reason, um, when it comes to an everything bagel, I don't mind like a little like, so like if I get like a, like a blueberry bagel, right? And then it touches the everything bagel, for some reason I don't mind that. Like I like a little bit of that savoriness with the blueberry yeah, bagel or like the cinnamon that. bagel. All right, we're just gonna toast these guys. Um, I'm gonna get our pot de cremes out. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Since you're, you're working on that chicken over there too, Chef Charlotte, Nora wants to know if the chicken sticks, does that mean that it's not ready to flip? I'm curious what this answer is. Did you hear me, Chef Charlotte? <laughs> You're inside the refrigerator. All right. I'm going to use the movie magic ones, guys. I I'm sorry. Did you ask me a question did, while my I head did, was... I did, but, but you were... You I was were so in the, in the refrigerator. <laughs> it was a question for Norma around the chicken. And yeah. She wants to know if it's sticking to the grill. Does that mean that it's not ready to turn? That is a great question. So what, there's a couple of things that means. So one, the yogurt, right, is a little bit, um, a little bit sticky. But what that means is that um, my grill wasn't hot enough, right? So I, have, I turned my grill down and it wasn't hot enough. Um, and yes, some, a, a part of that could be it wasn't ready to turn. But yes, my grill was not hot enough when I put that chicken oh. on. That is a great question. That's a really great question. Okay. Okay. Here are my pot of crumbs. These, look how these set up. These have been in there for about an hour and a half, actually. The other ones were still a little bit loose, um, but you can see how they firmed up really nice, right? And they've got that beautiful sheen on top. Oh, are those not so pretty? I'm loving these, right? So now, this is where you can get really creative. I've got a couple of different toppings over here. I've got some raspberries. Um, also, I learned something today. I was today years old when someone said, why don't you just wash the raspberries directly in the clamshell? Um, I had them out like in a colander, and I was like, this is silly. Anyway, I learned something new, so you can wash them directly in that thing. Who knew, right? Yeah, and some um, of the containers have the holes only on, the, on yeah. the top, so I just fill the container, and then I turn it over as a little colander. Smarty. All right, so to this, I'm going to add some cocoa nibs, right, which is just like basically the cocoa bean that they've chopped up. It has great, like, bitter texture a little crunch to it. You could do chocolate covered ones if you'd like. Um, you could also do like chocolate covered espresso beans or coffee beans if you want, which would be really fun. Some granola if that's what your, what your jam is. It's sort of like the world's your oyster. I'm gonna throw some raspberries on there. Look at this. Boop. How do y'all like that? Oh. That looks gorgeous. We oh. do have another really great question. Oh. Um, I'm around. here for it, tell me. Around storing blueberries, so what's the best way to store blueberries, um, and should they be washed before storing in the fridge? Um, I do not wash them before I store them. I wash them as I eat them. Yep. Does that make sense? And yes. then I keep them in their um, container. Sometimes, um, depending on, like, if I get, like, the... I don't like to keep them so packed down, right? Sometimes I'll put them in a, you know bigger container, but yeah, I just wash them as I eat them. That's a great question. Great question. Am I burning bagels, y'all? No, they're perfectly toasted. They're not toasted at all, but that's okay. They're good enough for me. Doop. I'm sure they're getting a little bit of that heat from yeah. the... Little toast there. The grill. Yeah. Come here, bagel. So now I'm imagining with all the different flavors of bagels you have, you're gonna, you can take it in two directions, sweet or yes. savory, right? Yes, where is our decadent blueberry labna? Oh my God, like seriously, seriously. Y'all, you know what I did? I used my labna bowl for my, um, I used my labna bowl for my bougie cucumber shot. <laughs> so we're gonna use this one. Let me get this. It'll work, it'll still work. And remember, we added that extra hit of walnut to this to like give it some more texture. Oh, just want to eat this by the spoonful. I love the color, it's so pretty too. My God, it's beautiful. I mean, the, the thickness that I'm, I just. It's like icing. I hope, I hope people can see this at home the way I'm viewing it here too, as far oh as the thickness that you're getting from. I'm gonna use, look at this. Look at the screen. like spreadability of this. Like, stop. Look at this. Look at you that. Could probably hold the bowl upside down and it wouldn't. Fall. It's like a blizzard from Dairy Queen. Okay, I'm just gonna save this for myself. All right, <laughs> this one's mine. Boop. 
All right, perfect. I love this. This is perfection. Look at this. This is perfection. It's like guilt. I'll turn it so you can see my, my guy. All right. Now, our chicken is beautiful, is perfect. So is this bagel. I have made a salad. So I have to tell a story. So I've known Lorena for 13 years, and on my very first day, of work at HEB, Lorena took me to a restaurant. We were doing store tours and she was showing me all about what dietitians do at HEB. She took me to this restaurant called Casa Kebab. Hands down, kebab. best rice I've ever had in my life, but like the kebabs and the roasted vegetables and like everything was so wonderful and it was like so nervous and you were so warm and I loved it. Um, <laughs> so this is I'm um, sort of a little homage to you, right? <laughs> so we're gonna put these skewers right here onto this directly onto the salad. Look at that. Oh, look how good these look, y'all. Oh, they look delicious. I'm like salivating. My mouth is watering. These are great. These are perfect. Yes. Yes. All right. So we'll do something like this. A little bit like this. Kind of stack them. So you really are representing all parts of the USDA My Plate, Chef Charlotte, yes. um, including including dairy. But we've got some lean proteins, your yes. vegetables. You brought in our fruits. I mean, this is just a, a really complete way to get what you need. A little bit of um, lemon juice. I think there's a lemon seed somewhere. Don't worry. So my greens. I'm just using. I just had what I had in the fridge. So some baby kale is in there. A little pomegranate and some herbs my leftover herbs that I had, um, I didn't want to throw them away and I don't want to have er herb soup in my produce store so I just chopped them up and threw them into my, um, into my salad. Oh, it's so great. It adds a whole other dimension to um, your, like to your greens. And then I'm just going to take this labna like this, just like this. So it's part dipping but also oh, going to yes. be like your yes. dressing for your greens. Yes. And then I had... You know what I have, guys? Stand by. One more thing. I'm on the edge of I've my burned seat. so many calories running back and forth. Oh, did I lose it? Oh, bummer. I lost my cucumbers, guys. Ha! Here's some right here. Nope. Look, extra okay. shredded cucumber. I really wanted to do that. Ah, so good. It really is about oh presentation. Gosh. It really is. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. See, yogurt as an ingredient. I'm super into this. Look how beautiful that looks. I mean, how many things could you come up with with all of the different options of yogurt oh that God. we have? There, these are just amazing, amazing okay. recipes, Chef Charlotte. Very easy. Um, I am so glad that you came. I'm glad I was able to so come. So glad too. that you came. I'm so glad that you guys came. Um, if you guys are interested and want to learn more about what um, Lenaina does here at HEB as a dietitian, you can always go to HEB.com slash wellness and find out about what all of our dietitians do. If you missed anything today and you want to go back and rewatch it, all this wonderful nutrition information and then find out all about yogurt, you can go to youtube.com slash H-E-B. And then to find out what classes are coming up next, um, you can go to hb.com slash classes. So thank you guys so much for coming, Lorena. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me, and thank you to all of the great things that we have available at HEB from our merchant team that helps sources, our, our dairy farmers that bring us all this wonderful right. milk. 2.1 um, million gallons 2. a week. 2.1 mil million <laughs> gallons per week. So uh, thanks for having me today. I, I had a great time. And I want to keep on answering questions for folks out there, so reach out to us, and, and let's continue this. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. See ya.